So this is it. We are at the last race of the year, the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix. And um, yeah, I guess you might as well enjoy it. Hopefully the, you'll, you've enjoyed the season as much as I have. Coming on from the Brazilian Grand Prix, the McLaren celebration was still a bit too much for me. It's a bit over the top because they seem to celebrate just the way Mercedes celebrates whenever they win a championship. So, you know, but the McLaren, the McLaren is a car that never had its full potential driven out of it. So that car had never got to show its full potential. And Alonso would have done more with that car. I know I've said it, and I might be seen as a Carlos Sainz hater or a McLaren hater, but you know, but that's truth. You know, that's the truth. Because Alonso would have done more, more with that car. And you didn't see Torraso celebrate as much as McLaren did. You know, Torraso had two drivers this year get podiums, a second and a third, but they didn't celebrate as much as McLaren did. So, considering that Torraso is a midfield team and McLaren is supposed to be a top tier team, but the midfield team is not celebrating as much. So, this is something we gotta look at. I don't know, I really don't get it myself. And um, the Vettel Leclerc battle. That battle is getting very good. Is uh, is going to be prime time? So I'm looking forward to see what's going to happen during this Grand Prix. I don't predict either of them to be on the podium, but we'll see. Um, um, my aim is that my um, I predict Albon to be on the podium along with Vettel and Lewis to be the winner. And but we'll see. But we'll see how they go. They might still be on the podium, but my prediction is that it'll be. Lewis Hamilton with Red Bull. So Valtteri Bordas, he has to start from the back of the grid. And I'm not sure how good he's at cutting his, making his way through traffic, especially when he gets to the faster midfield team like McLaren and uh, Alfa Romeo. So I'm not sure. But with strategy, they can make things happen. They just have to make sure he comes out ahead of them. And that's it. He doesn't have to pass them on the track. So I predict him to be in the top, top six, obviously, top six. So fifth would be a solid result. If he makes it to fifth, it'll be a very good result for a year for him. And Kvyat, he needs to finish higher than Pierre Gasly in the standings. Um, I mean, not in the standings, but because Gasly is actually higher than him, but he needs to finish, he needs to beat Gasly in this race. Because next year, one of them will be out, I believe, Next year, whoever is the winner, whoever is doing well, will stay in the team or maybe be moved on to a different team. And the loser in the in the total Rosso battle battle will be out out of Formula One or at least out of total Rosso. And so Kvyat needs to make sure he wins. Uh, he beats Gasly in Abu Dhabi. Um, we'll see. That's a strong task because Gasly is riding a high wave at the moment um has hmm, if you're a Haas fan you really have to wonder why is Gunter Steiner still the principal there why does he still have a job because the team should be doing a lot better with everything that's happened with the team and everything that's going on I mean probably you know the team principal would have been gone uh, just the way it looks you know especially the team principal who's saying that um that he should listen to the latter drivers more and they went the completely wrong direction on their updates so it's never going maybe they have he has a special connection with the Lara and Ferrari maybe that's why they have a step special Italian connection I'm not sure I'm not sure what happened but um, hopefully next year goes better um, we'll see they kept the same drivers so there's some consistency to see at least where the fare compared to this year so that's good we'll see how it goes Hulkenberg, <clears throat> um, he really has to consider this as his last race, pretty much. I mean, he doesn't say he's retiring, but this is pretty much his last race, and he needs to face it. That okay, this is it, the farewell. Um, so he has. So if he finishes in the points, that'll be good. That should be his aim to finish in the points for his last F1 race and to enjoy. It, that's it. The only way for him to come back, I see two scenarios for him to come back. Either he gets a backer, a sponsor that could sponsor him in Formula One. He become a test driver and makes a key contribution to a team 
or he comes up with something, you know, um, um, something that that helps the team move forward. So that's the only way I see him coming up because there's just too much competition, too many young guys in F2 and yeah, to even F3 guys, you know, and some of them are loaded. They have they have sponsors and have parents, wealthy parents, as you see with Williams. So who wanted getting F1? So he needs to really find the, his best bet is to find a backer, a solid backer. So that's the only way for him to come back in F1 or maybe make him name for himself somewhere else in something write a book become famous and maybe you know the fame might attract a team like hey this you know his name could attract a team um i don't know whatever he has to do he has to do it maybe we'll go win Le Mans again that might help and other than that i guess that's it we'll watch the race and we'll see how it goes thank you for watching